earlier this holy week, at age 43, an old friend of mine got her very first tattoo. A single word on her wrist where she would see it each morning as she arose to greet a new day, awake and alive. Veriditas. Veriditas. The 12th century mystic and polymath Hildegard of Bingen is responsible for this beautiful Latin word that is loosely translated as the greening power of God. The greening power. This greenness was an expression of heaven, and especially the creative power of life, which can be witnessed in the gardens, the forests, and the farmlands all around us. And like those lands, it is something to be cultivated in both our bodies and our souls. It is meant to reflect nature's divine healing power, a constant force, but also a momentary condition in which God heals through the greening power of a living plant. When one consumes a healing plant, this divine power is transferred then from the plant to human and becomes a moment of veriditas. This experience, it's meant to be a daily occurrence as you eat, a means to stay vital with the greening power, but also a reminder of our eternal interconnectedness with nature. Now, I remember earlier springs, like last year and the one before that, that were lush, lush against the odds, beckoning us outward even as we turned within, shutting our doors against the virus, fearful in the darkness of our homes. Still, the spring called out to us then. You remember that? Floral abundance blaring like the song of the phoenix that always rises from the ashes, proclaiming even as so many of our loved ones died. So many of our plans died, and maybe even our hopes died. That life continues. That even when we die, as we know we will, life will rise again. All those tiny resurrections. The hummingbird. The azalea, yeah! Welcome to the Azalea Party, everyone. (laughs) Your invitation, it's everywhere. We're going to have a virtual flower communion a little bit later, but it's more like an Azalea communion, as you'll see. Well, this was the year Easter got really real in my house. My children are six now, and all weekend I've been fielding constant questions about the crucifixion. How, why, who, and what specifically. (laughs) I say it plain. Jesus broke the laws of the Roman order. He challenged the authorities of his time. He flipped the tables at the temple. He welcomed sinners and tax collectors to eat with him. He healed those who were in pain. And he talked all about a new community where everyone would share what they had, putting an end to servitude and inequity. And through his works, he became too big of a threat to the prevailing order. And so he was sentenced to death by the deliberately cruel Roman torture of crucifixion and publicly so as to scare his followers from continuing his work. But that was on Friday. Today. Today, we learn that love is so much greater than death. Amen? Amen. All that he had done and said, all the love he gave, it returned to the people shimmering even brighter than death. How many of you have lost someone you love these past two years? I mean, I'm serious. Let's have a show of hands. In the last two years alone, how many of you have lost a loved one? Let's raise hands and really look at each other. You out there, you can raise your hand. What is that phenomenon that happens when suddenly the dead are everywhere? 
They become a visitor in your life. You know what I mean? Maybe it was someone you hadn't even thought about in years. But now that they are gone, every word they spoke comes rushing back to you at the strangest moments or exactly the right moments. In death, a person looms much larger. You remember the way he he looked at you. The words she spoke, they carry more weight now, more meaning. They become louder, not softer. You know what I mean? I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Jesus said that the night before his death. And those words, they only became louder in the years, in the millennia that followed. Well, these days, like many of you, I have recently been plagued by nightmares when I close my eyes at night. I'm of a generation that has never known true nuclear, nuclear panic. And in recent weeks, I have been shocked into awakening from visions of a dimly lit shelter under a house, huddling against the overlords of greed who drop the hammer of terror upon the land, upon all the land. But here's the truth of even those nightmares. Even if the worst happens, if destruction and death do come, there is another sunrise. Something else happens next. Even if we are extinguished, life will re-emerge. And if the Jesus story is difficult for you to swallow, just remember our planetary and our mammalian evolution has only ever gone in one direction, toward life. Now I want to tell you two stories, two resurrection stories. One that is about changing tides and one that is about changing just a life. Two tiny resurrection stories. Now, you may have heard one of the most exciting stories of this holy week comes from our own backyard in Decatur. Earlier this year, the DeKalb County School Board released their budget highlighting which buildings would be designated for repairs and renovations. Many families, teachers, and students were dismayed to find that Druid Hills High School was kept off that list. Surely the sewage overflows, crumbling walls, and leaking ceilings were common knowledge for years now. Marshall, I didn't really know you were going to be here today. (laughs) (laughs) Now, what does this budget process mean in a time when public education is withstanding attacks the likes of which I have never seen in my lifetime? When states are passing bills requiring teachers not to use the word gay, not to support their transgender students and families, to refrain from discussing racism when they teach United States history, as though gayness, transgender folk, and racism are somehow biased rather than merely neutral facts of life in America today. After decades of public education under attack by budget cuts, by political undermining of all kinds, and now, and now we have some kind of endgame taking shape, an undereducated populace who does not have the reasoning skills to determine truth from fiction, reality TV from actual real life, who suddenly question basic democracy and basic science as though they are subjective. This does not feel like a veriditas time for our society, my friends. I'm not feeling like we are blooming, growing and thriving, greening into something more effective, more harmonious, more peaceful. And we have been wrenched apart, kept apart for the common good, but still, we're not exactly sure how to come back from it all. This is the backdrop for these students at Druid Hills High School, told by the school board that their crumbling building was not a priority in fact, that they were not a priority. 
Now, I remember school as a deadening time in many ways. My own greening was often stifled and suffocated under the institutional lighting authorities, too. And I was affirmed for my silence more than my contributions. Like, all, any kids say amen? <clears throat> In Luke 24, when Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, rolled away the stone of Jesus' tomb, they were amazed to find it empty. They were amazed. And when they told the apostles, well, they were disbelieving. The stone was rolled away after a brutal, torturous execution by the state after death. Well, there was something next. So this week, some kids at Druid Hills High School got together and rolled away a stone. They took their phones and they made a video detailing the crumbling walls of their school. Have you seen it? All the ways the building was dangerous and falling down around them. But mostly what was clear were the, was the love that they had for these spaces, for these activities and programs and classes they cherished, juxtapos juxtaposing their love of their school against the crumbling infrastructure. Their video, it was picked up by some local news agencies, and within, I think it was 48 hours, the DeKalb County superintendent sent an open letter to the school letting them know they were going to revisit the earlier policy and address the construction needs at Druid Hills High School. <clears throat> now, the students who made this video will never see the benefits of these renovations. That's what you need to know. They knew this would only affect the students who come after them, who will enter those halls feeling like their education matters to us, their community. It's a tiny resurrection story. The marathon of hope, as Parker Palmer puts it, a hand reaching out to carry the torch of hope ever onward, step by step. Something happens next. Sometimes we need to find just the tiny resurrections in order to believe. The second story is a bit more personal. And I was thinking maybe he would be here today. Is Rhett Baird here? Well, hopefully you're watching online, Rhett. A few days ago, this Holy Week, we at UUCA hosted a monthly gathering of North Georgia UU clergy. This group has slowly been returning to in-person meetings. And with his permission, I wanted to tell you about how Reverend Rhett Baird, retired minister from Macon, attended this gathering of clergy. It was the middle of the day. He dressed up in his finest suit and tie. And as he entered this space, I think I was washing my hands or something, he stopped and gaped at me, eyes shining, just standing there, I realized something was happening. This was a capital M moment. I slowly put it together that I had not shared airspace with Rhett in two years. I have not seen him in the flesh, as they say. And so there we stood, just in silence, beholding, amazed. It wasn't only me. A few minutes later, somebody in the meeting was talking when Joan, another minister, entered the room. Now, Joan and Rhett have known each other for over 40 years as colleagues. When she walked in the room, Rhett stood for her entrance with tears shining in his eyes. The miracle is happening, friends. If you are here, you are alive. We live Red had a gift for each person in the group, a couple of interesting postcards and a story he had written because he has learned that only two things matter anymore, dear family and dear friends. It is love that has got him thus far and love that he remembered to share with us. He asked that we send the postcards to someone who has been on our minds but who we haven't spoken to in a while, someone who needs to be encircled closer in. So many tiny resurrections. When you start to look, you see them everywhere. How should we emerge from our tomb? 
as the stone is rolled away. On our knees, maybe, praising the spirit of love and life that we are here at all. We who have survived when so many have not. Ready to join the marathon of hope. What if we never took that time, that moment, to rejoice in the gift of life, the gift that is our life now, in the greening, in the love bestowed on this earth, in the rebirth of growth, each year the blessing so green and with such majesty that we stand back amazed at the miracle of it all. So what does that look like? So many tiny resurrections. Love lives on when you decide it is better to be kind than right. <clears throat> I'll say that again. Love lives on when you decide it is better to be kind than right. Love lives on when you do what good you can do, knowing it will neither be perfect nor permanent. Love lives on. When you tend to someone who is struggling, who is grieving, love lives on when you give generously to communities who are in need. Love lives on when you create time and space for your spiritual life to flourish. Love lives on when you fight for what has been overlooked and underserved. Love lives on when you remember that word, veriditas, the greening power of God, the greening power of life. And you stand in amazement at the precious, awesome gift of life. You spend at least a moment each day not taking it for granted, but really honoring what it means that you have survived another glorious greening day. But the truth is that even if you do none of these things, if you do none of this, without you even lifting a finger, we can believe in the resurrection that is as holy as it is constant. Love lives on. Say it with me. Love lives on. You are the resurrection and the life.